I still firmly believe in the DIY ethos. Completely believe in that. You need to make this on your own. But you will hit a certain point along the road where you just need a little bit of a hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Promote the Hell Out of It. My name is Misael Trujillo and this is the podcast where I talk to people worth promoting about subjects we should all be talking about. And I am so happy to have today's guest on the show. I talked to Pete Wright, drummer for Ducking Punches, and I said goodbye, creator of the Marred Peril zine. He is sponsored by British Drum Co, Amedia Symbols, Remo, Barbic Sticks, Protection Racket Cases. I don't think I've missed anything out there. He is also owner of The Compound, where he is a drum teacher. Uh, We talk about how he balances all of that with his family life. We talk about keeping healthy on tour, we talk about yoga, meditation, and a hell of a lot in between, including, obviously, the wonderful bands he's in. I mean, Duck and Punches, in my opinion, are one of the best and most consistent DIY bands in the UK. I absolutely love watching them live every time, and I love the attitude they bring to the DIY scene, and I specifically just love talking to Pete. It was such a great conversation. Any questions you've got, anything you wish I'd have asked him extra, Anything that you think I should be talking about on the show, I would love to hear from you. Just let me know. Get in touch in any way. It really, really encourages me and it just helps the show because it tells other people about it too. Uh, This episode is sponsored by our friends over at Nextland and we've got a competition going on at the moment to win some of their goodies. All you have to do is tug us all in a post on any social media network and let us know what your favourite episode has been so far and you stand the chance to win some goodies. All the details are in the description and on our social media. So yeah, go check that out. And without any further ado, here is the wonderful episode from Pete Wright. So Pete, I am really happy to chat to you today. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. Thank you very much. Oh, very that's, well. That's excellent. I was gutted because we were supposed to catch up a while ago in Barcelona we and were, it didn't yeah. end up happening. Uh, but it's good to be able to chat. Yes, mate. Yeah, I'm, try- I'm trying to remember when I was over, what were you doing? You were, were you still there or were you traveling at that I, point? I was packing the flat up, getting ready to go to Asia. So it was, all a bit it. Like, it was the last month we were there kind of thing. Yeah, you're you're very lucky to live in Barcelona. It's a uh, it's a beautiful city. It was fun, dude. It was a good two years, and then yeah. Brexit fucked it all up, and we had to yeah. move. So, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. fun times. <laughs> so I've I've been really excited to chat, and obviously we'll talk about music a lot. But um, I'm really into the fact that you did your first conference panel at Wild Paths. How did that go? <laughs> It was really good, actually. I mean, Wild Wild Pass, for for anyone who doesn't know, it's a a new festival. This was the first year of it running in Norwich in the UK. Um, And there was over 200 acts um, playing across 20 different venues all over Norwich um, over three days. So it was a whole weekend. Um, But they also included kind of conferences, talks there was graffiti artists there was there was kind of a whole bunch of things going on um so they had two days of um various kind of panels and talks and workshops and yeah they um ben who runs it asked me to come along to to do a chat about kind of being out on the road and what it's like and how you prepare and how you look after yourself kind of well-being um while you're kind of away from home and yeah it was it was really nice i mean they they ran it at a place called epic studios uh which is a music venue but it also doubles up as um where the access to music course is held as well um and so basically on the friday that i spoke they invited all of the students basically to ditch their lessons and um and come in and and uh, spend the day listening to various different panels uh, which was really nice so there was kind of bits on um labels uh do we need record labels anymore prs ppl royalties uh well-being publishers um it was great you know and um you know i, I kind of look back and think god if i was you know when i was 16 17 I would have I would have killed to have uh, 
been you know able to have access to something like that it was yeah it was a wonderful day went really well I was about to say the same thing man I was about to say that I wish I'd have had access to that information at that age and a lot of that is stuff that you learn from years on the road and just from doing stuff yourself it is how was the reception from the students yeah it was it was really nice actually I mean um you know it's always a bit odd I mean I've I've personally never done anything like that before so I, I had kind of no sort of preconceptions of how how it was going to go or who was going to turn up or if people would even stay kind of our visions of just everyone walking out halfway through but um, <laughs> it was yeah it was it was lovely you know um one of those things we had I think we had an hour set aside and I think I think we only got through probably maybe half of what we'd planned to you know I sort of always yeah. thought got an hour an hour's going to it's going to be hard to fill an hour of talking, but actually it was uh, the complete opposite, you know. Um, I think that's the way it goes, yeah. I found that on the podcast. It's really weird. You, you sit for an hour and there's some guests, especially people I've never talked to before, Yeah, are like, this is going to be difficult. How do I how do I flesh this out? And yeah. suddenly you look at the time and it's been an hour and a half and you're like, wow, I haven't even answered yeah. half the questions I had. <laughs> and, what, and what is funny, like I'm absolutely terrified of public speaking as well. That oh, is dude. that is one of my <laughs> one of my phobias. Like if I've got to do that, or you know, a couple of times I've had to do like a best man wedding speech and and all of that, and it's it's something that I really struggle with. You know, get I, I was kind of think like behind a drum kit, I'm absolutely fine. You know, <laughs> I, could, I could have fifty thousand people in front of me, but if if I have to talk to six people in a room, it it's just. <laughs> it's, it's hard, yeah. man. I find it really, really hard. I'm out of my comfort zone, you know? That's really interesting, dude. So why do you push yourself to be in those situations? Because obviously you've got the choice to say no to some of those situations. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think for me it's, it's important really as, as a human being and as a race, you know, we, we've got to um, we've got to kind of keep pushing ourselves, right? I mean, that's yeah. kind of the purpose of life. Uh, if not, what is what is the point of even being here? Um, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that um, getting out there and um, doing things that uh, sort of push you out of your comfort zone, that, that can only be a good thing. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. for me, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who, and we may touch on this later, I'm, you know, I'm someone who's always kind of suffered with like a lot of anxieties and stuff like that. And I've, I've always kind of felt that kind of the the easy option would just be to kind of shut the curtains, lay in bed all day and um, kind of procrastinate, procrastinate. But um, one of my best coping mechanisms to do that um, or not do that even is um, to actually push myself um, and to to take things on that I that I wouldn't normally do i mean i say even even some something like this podcast is um is is pretty tough for me because um you know a few days beforehand i'm you know get getting those feelings in my stomach of like oh my god why why am i doing this <laughs> why am i putting myself in this position um but i know you know as soon as i've done it and it's over i will be you know pretty proud of myself for for getting through that you know that's the thing dude and i think that the way people view you for pushing past those feelings and the way people um, can relate to that and, and gain something from that is so valuable and that will make it easier for you as time goes yeah. on. Those, I, I, I find those feelings never go away. I get nervous before every podcast still. Yeah. But I do gain something after every conversation which makes it worthwhile. Yeah, definitely. And, and this podcast has been great. I mean, I was listening back to um, some of the older once you did, you know, and there's there's some really amazing people that you've um, you've had on there, and it's it's just lovely to hear lots of different viewpoints from lots of different people, you know. And I think um, again, we can we could all stand to kind of learn stuff from talking to each other, you know. We're we're all so wrapped up in you know social media and staring at our phones and you know thinking that we're all interacting with each other but a lot of the time <laughs> there is no interaction going on there you know That's we so think it, we think it's a dialogue but it isn't actually a real dialogue you know um and you know even being able to chat to you kind of over this this medium is is absolutely brilliant you know uh, we should do it more and it's interesting because 
I feel like there's there's certain topics that are being talked about more on social media. Yes. But sometimes we forget to to add the positive side of it. Yeah. And that's what you've just done. Like mental health anxiety is something that is being talked about more. But how many times do we get to chat up to someone who encourages us to push past our our discomforts and to do something positive? That's something that's something that sometimes isn't touched upon as much. And it's left at, oh, we all need to be aware that it's a thing. And that's it. Yes. End of conversation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Um, you know, and and I guess how can I put this? I I guess we've just got to kind of strive to make those connections. You know, we are we are all connected upon many different levels. You know, and it's it's I, I I guess I've been lucky in in my life. I've I've had quite a few people sort of almost appear out of nowhere into my life who have. Um, kind of changed my my way of thinking a little bit you know and we we kind of all need that sometimes you know we we go through life um kind of ambling along being kind of comfortable and then sometimes you just you just need a bit of a kick up the ass and a bit of a, <laughs> exactly. a, a a different viewpoint you know and and sometimes that happens when you when you least expect it someone comes into your life and you go ah okay yeah i can look at life slightly differently again you know and that can be a really really interesting time it's so true something we were touching on before we actually did the podcast you mentioned that you'd been working a lot on meditation and yoga yeah and that's something that i'm working on at the moment so i'd love to know how how you got into it and, and what you're currently doing yeah so i mean the the yoga thing sort of came up really because um at the time a a student that i teach drums to his mum was a yoga teacher actually and um i was i was having a few issues with kind of like back problems and um you know i guess my posture and stuff was wasn't particularly great and i got chatting to to her one day and she just said oh you know you should you should come try yoga um so i started to do sort of some private one-to-one lessons with her and it it just made me feel so much better i was amazed within within really a couple of sessions you know my yeah um my whole body was feeling more relaxed more flexible you know i could um start to bring in that practice into my kind of warm-up exercises um after i'd after i've kind of played i would do some stretches and some yoga postures um and then i noticed it was making my mind a lot calmer as well um and for that kind of portion of time when i was practicing um i had this kind of stillness and calmness around myself that i'd never really had before um and from there i thought hang on there must be there must be something in this (laughs) you know so i did a bit of research and then i came across a guy called noah levine i don't know if you've heard of noah levine no um he's a he's a writer he's an he's an old punk rocker basically um who again got into kind of buddhist meditation and yoga and all of this and and he ended up writing a couple of books um his his first one which is called dharma punks is is something definitely to check out um it it sort of talks about uh all the all the problems he got into like kind of alcohol drugs um he ended up kind of on the streets he ended up kind of in jail um and from there he kind of um discovered meditation um and that kind of really helped change his whole kind of thinking and out and thoughts of his of his life around and through that um he's now kind of like quite a big buddhist teacher i say he's he's written a couple of books he does um sessions um he's done podcasts that you can check out which is really good so he was he was kind of the first person that that i read his stuff and went okay this is this is cool this is kind of like diy this is punk this is um this is pretty hardcore you know i'd always thought kind of meditation and Buddhist stuff and Zen and whatever was kind of for hippies. <laughs> Absolutely agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to say there's anything wrong with being a hippie, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm a I'm a punk at the end of the day, you know, and and I've grown up most of my life kind of wanting to smash the fuck out of stuff. Um, but actually, to realise that kind of the two very much go hand in hand. Actually, 
you know, there's this, there's this other book that I recently got called um, The Punk Rock Yoga Manifesto, which is absolutely brilliant. And it talks um, quite in detail about kind of the connection between punk and yoga and meditation. And, and actually, you know, it's all a very kind of anti-establishment, um, very kind of... Uh, uh, how, how can I put this? It's, it's a very kind of personal movement. You know, you have control of yeah. this. You know, it's not down to anyone else. You know, it's a very DIY um, ethos behind it all, which which I love. Um, and then, you know, I guess talking about kind of random people who come into your life, um, I then met Nelson, who is the guitarist in We Bless This Mess. Uh, yeah. And now he's, he's funnily enough, he, he ended up joining Duffin Punches playing guitar. Um, but he, again, you know, very kind of spiritual guy who, who really kind of showed me the, the art of um, meditation and, and the power of meditation and, and what it can do. You know, and, and me and Nelson, we, we sit up for hours and hours on end talking about this. You know, we're, we're both kind of pretty much kind of straight edge living people. Um, but it's it, it, it again, it was it was someone that I met probably a couple of years ago and and he again kind of really opened my eyes up to sort of other practices and then through that I met other people and then discovered other books I mean there's uh, this other guy called Brad Warner who again was a um, was an old punk rocker played bands I think they were a Washington DC kind of um, straight edge hardcore band back in the day um, he's written 10 or 11 books now. Uh, his first one, which is called Hardcore Zen, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and then his, his second one, which is probably my favourite, is called Sit Down and Shut Up. And it's all about the sort of the, the Soto arm um, of Zen meditation. Um, so both of those books are great. And then, funnily enough, I, I discovered a new one yes, uh, just yesterday, actually, um, which you, you may have heard of this guy. He's called Miguel Chen. And he's a bass player yeah. for Teenage Bottle Rocket. Yeah. And I had no idea that, yeah, he runs, like, Yoga for Punks. Um, he's, again, he's he's written a couple of couple of books. Uh, he's just brought out his second one, which I think is uh, dealing about kind of death. And his first one is, yeah, kind of more, more meditation practice. Uh, he also runs, like, a yoga studio back at home and stuff. So, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's funny. There's there's lots of people out there kind of into this kind of stuff, you know, and it's um, it, it is a very powerful thing. It's certainly helped me and it's helped a lot of people around me as well. Yeah, dude, it's something that really needs to be talked about more within the punk community, within the mm. touring community in general. I had yeah. a really good conversation on the podcast uh, with Nikki about neurodevelopment. Yeah. Um, and one of the things we were talking about is the coping mechanisms that we use in life and how they stick with us. And then you basically need to rewire your brain through movement, through yoga yeah. to try and get your body back into the things you should have learned in the womb and as a toddler. Yes. And obviously, yeah. I've got so many of those from my time being homeless, coping mechanisms, fear mechanisms that you pick up. Yeah. But from touring in a van, in a cramped space with other people, we're constantly having to cope with situations that are uncomfortable. Absolutely. And if we're not rewiring ourselves and getting that tension out of us, that can escalate and become something quite serious if we're not looking after it. It can. And I, I think with touring, that's that's always something um, that that is, yeah, vitally important to kind of think about and talk about because um, I, I certainly remember back, like, the first few times I toured, you know, that you have this this idea of, of what it's got to be, you know, and you think, right, it's, it's got to be 24 hours of fun. It's got to be 24 hours of chat, conversations, hanging out, you know, and actually, if you do that, as much as you love your bandmates, you need time apart from them, you know, um, so and even, even just sitting in a van, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it's almost like you can feel the tension of like, we should be having a laugh and we should be having a conversation. But actually, do we? Do we need to have a conversation right now? You know, probably not, you know? And once you learn that, 
you actually you end up having a really <laughs> nice time you know and when you do then have those those opportunities to kind of hang out and have a laugh then it's even more kind of special you know they mean more yeah Absolutely. you know it's, it's that feeling of not having to live in each other's pockets for like two weeks solid you know or, or however long the tour is you know um and i think definitely you know we're we're all quite good like ducking punches especially like um you know i say i, I do quite a bit of meditation nelson does um, a minimum of an hour of meditation every day um ash as well our bass player he's he's um takes some time out to do meditation and he's into a bit of yoga as well so you know we all we all sort of individually do find time to find a corner somewhere you know um and sometimes just even just meditating in the van you know it, it can be done you know there's there's again this this whole kind of um, idea that that meditation should you know be in a nice quiet secluded peaceful calm corner somewhere tranquil you know that isn't always um available no and it becomes an excuse yeah and it becomes an excuse definitely um and actually you don't need that anyway you know actually learning to um to to go inward and to meditate um in a noisy environment it's a really good skill set to have you know because if you if you are away for a few weeks you know you may not be able to find that quiet space certainly every day you won't be able to so being able to kind of just um do it do it in a van while there's other conversation or music going on is that's a, a really good thing to learn to do actually so true so true are there any apps or anything that you've been using for either yoga or meditation or youtube channels anything like that yeah, I mean, for, for yoga, I, I use a lot of um, yoga with Adrienne, who awesome, is yeah. absolutely brilliant. Um, she has got hundreds and hundreds of videos up, and it's oh, so many practices. There's, there's uh, the, the ones I tend to do, the, she does specific yoga for the morning and yoga for bedtime, and I do a lot of them. Um, some of them will be as short as 10 minutes, some of them are half an hour, some of them are a bit longer. But she does yoga for anxiety, yoga for headaches, yoga for migraines, yoga for knees, you know, pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, she has like a set yoga routine. So she she tends to be my sort of go to yoga person. Um, I do also do like a weekly yoga class as well. Um, a good friend of mine, Sarah Lewis, runs it in Norwich. So I go every Thursday and do a couple of hours with with her in a group as well, which is good. Um, in, in terms of um, kind of the more meditation stuff, I mean, uh, I don't I don't use many sort of guided meditation um, apps or videos. I, I tend to just find some some nice kind of music some, yeah. some just, just pretty much some calm music i i tend to at the moment i'm i'm only kind of really doing 20 minutes half an hour at a time you know i know people who do two three four hour meditation <laughs> sessions yeah, too much, too i don't really have that time you know <laughs> I've, I've got a four-year-old child so it's it's hard to to find time yeah. to do that um but certainly you know i'll 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 try and do a minimum of like 15 minutes a day you know and and sometimes that just means um putting a 15 minute timer on my phone um i've got a like a corner uh upstairs in my bedroom that that you know i put some some nice things up so um you know it's important to have a little bit of space where wherever that is so um that's that's what i tend to do just put some music on and time myself for 15 minutes and try not to fall asleep <laughs> yeah that's the thing that is the thing not falling asleep if you get too cozy yeah you mentioned that quite a few of you in ducking punches are doing some sort of meditation or yoga how long yeah. has that been going on within the band oh um i mean i guess ash ash only joined the band earlier this year that was kind of march kind of time this year and then nelson i guess has been in the band probably about a year and a half um so yeah and i guess i guess i've only really been doing the meditation sort of on the road um really since i was enjoying because again i i i guess again i was a bit self-conscious when i was the only one of four yeah. wanting to do it i sort of felt i did it i didn't feel confident or comfortable enough yet 
to do it, but it kind of um, it helped no end when other people joined who kind of understood that. So um, I guess, yeah, the last kind of year, year and a half, really. And what impact, what impact, what changes have you seen? I mean, as a collective, it's it's really nice actually i feel i feel like we're we're a lot more supportive of each other i feel we're a lot more yeah we're a lot more tuned into each other it, it, it's funny i think we we all now know you know if if one of the other people is having a bad day it's we're all very in tune to that you know we, we've almost become like a collective mind yeah. and if one of us is is slightly out of out, out of sync or whatever then the rest of us kind of we we kind of pick that up quite quickly actually so you know but but we can all kind of share advice and words of wisdom and whatever quite easily because we we all understand where uh where we're all all coming from you know the last thing i want to touch on on the subject is if you had to to give other touring bands young bands advice on on how to look after themselves in terms of their mental health and their band members' mental health, what would you be your number one tip? My number one tip uh, would be, I guess, don't put any kind of pressure or expectations on yourself. Um, I think, again, it's it can be one of those things, especially when you're younger, you know, you, you will have these preconceptions, again, of what tour is going to be. And... Don't kind of don't feel that you have to do what you think it's going to be. You have to do what feels natural, do what feels comfortable. And if that is playing a show and if it's then going and having a cup of tea and having a biscuit and going to bed, cool, do it. You know, don't feel pressure. Don't feel pressure because we have pressures all the way through society from politicians, from our bosses finances day-to-day bullshit that we all live in you know we all have these pressures upon ourselves and being in a band and touring it should be a a release from that and it should be a getaway from that and if you're not enjoying it then you need to figure out why you're not enjoying it and if that means um touring in a way that that doesn't seem cool whatever cool is, <laughs> um, don't feel peer pressured. For me, I absolutely love it when a, when a show is finished. I, I just love getting an early night, having a cup of tea, having a chat, watching a bit of telly. Brilliant. It's a really nice end to yeah. the night. You know, I don't feel that I have to have to go out and, and drink and get myself into some crazy stupor you know and go out partying all night you know if you want to do that and you you can sustain that and that's what makes you happy then fine i'm not going to knock that at all you know but um ultimately find what makes you happy and go with that and don't let anyone tell you otherwise yeah it's really difficult and it can be peer pressure like quite literally we had yeah situations in the band where one or two of us would be single and want to party hard after yeah. every gig and the rest of us would want to sit in a pub and have a quiet chat and it creates tension if you don't it deal does. with those situations properly and it's and it's really hard as well if um one of your your band members is say the driver you know yeah um, me. And, yeah <laughs> and to be honest me <laughs> um and it could be really hard you know if, it, if everyone else is like yeah let's go out and you're just thinking but i'm sober i'm tired and i've got to drive yeah. half an hour to where we're staying i don't want to go out till 2 or 3 a.m but you also don't want to feel like you're disappointing you know your your mates and your bandmates you know you want to you want to kind of um not feel like the party pooper you know um so true yeah you know you are you are, at the end of the day i always think driver's rights you know and, <laughs> and if for whatever reason if if i'm not driving and if i want to go out which very rarely happens but if i'm the one who wants to go out but the driver turns around and says no i want to get back fine i, I yeah. completely respect that you know um i i feel you know driver's rights is is very important especially when it comes to uh where you sleep as well the driver should always yeah. have the best bed 
and the quietest room. <laughs> it gets difficult when, like, and every band's different, but obviously different people are in different situations and some people are working pretty much full time and then taking time off and this is like their yes. holiday. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. that becomes difficult because I'm obviously self-employed and, and I put a lot of time into the band and and I my time's managed in a different way. Yes. So then I almost feel guilty sometimes because it's their holiday and they want yeah. to, to... So that, that yeah. can be tricky. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I mean, I've, I think we're kind of lucky now in, in Ducking Punches where... Um, you know, we we all pretty much, you know, we're we're all self-employed and we do our own thing uh, as well, you know, or alongside the band. Um, but when we tour, it is it is like work, not in a bad yeah. way. Work work can still be great, right? And work can be fun. For sure, it um, should be, yeah. But uh, you know, it, it is. We are there to work. At the end of the day, we we can we can enjoy ourselves. We can, um, you know, we can do all the fun things. But ultimately. We're not there to kind of piss about, really. We're there to to do a job, and that does that does kind of help with any of those tensions because we are all along the same lines. But I've definitely had it with other bands before, where you know I've been the only one self-employed, and you know the other guys are just kind of seeing it as yeah, kind of like a, a holiday away. And and I and I get that because for them it it is, you know, um, it's it's hard. Band politics is always really hard. <laughs> let's talk about the other side of. Let's talk about the payoff. And uh, Ducking Panches has had, had some very cool experiences recently, uh, supporting Third Eye Blind at the O2. How was, <laughs> yeah, that? That was that? I mean, it was cool. It was it was very unexpected. To be fair, I mean, it was it was one of those things. You know, we got we got this. We just got a, a message through on our Facebook page going like, "Oh, do you want to come and come and do this?" And we and we sort of looked at it and went what <laughs> what why why have we been asked to do this for um and i'd sort of forgotten who third eye blind was to be honest so <laughs> i went first thing i obviously do is go on spotify look for their most popular song and turn it on i was like ah oh, holy this fuck song. this is who third eye blind is ah oh, ah oh, this song right and then actually i delved into them a bit more and realized these were a big deal actually like i didn't i didn't realize quite how big a deal they are you know they've been going since 93 you know they've got um they've had like 12 million sales of albums you know the first album yeah. went six six times platinum you know i didn't quite really, i just thought they were kind of a one one hit wonder but actually they've, they've got like a a real big legion of fans and because they were they only did two uk shows they did london and manchester so yeah i mean obviously we we kind of jumped at the opportunity especially when yeah when when they said that it was going to be at the o2 kentish town um which is a venue you know i've, I've only been two three times i guess to that venue but i've i've always loved it you know it's a it's such a beautiful space you know um and i guess you know from a selfish point of view sometimes there's those venues that you want to kind of tick off and go like I've played that venue now, and that was that was kind of quite a a big kind of reason personally for wanting to do it as well, just because I wanted to play that venue, and it was yeah. it was amazing. You know, we 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 didn't necessarily have particularly high expectations because we were first on support band. We aren't necessarily a band that. Um, probably fans of third eye blind are likely to know or like so we thought well you know we'll turn up we'll do our thing and you know as you do and see and see how it goes and actually it was it was a really beautiful experience it was turning up you know everyone you know some sometimes you you turn up at these big venues and everyone's kind of um in work mode and they've been doing it for yeah. years that they don't really give a crap about you but um we turned up and everyone working there was was absolutely brilliant everyone the the rep and the promoter and the sound guys and the roadies and the techies and um all of third eye blinds uh, road crew were lovely as well and yeah you know turned up did our thing set up and kind of lucky in in the kind of doors were 
were at seven and we went until eight o'clock which was which was quite nice and quite unheard of because again generally those kind of big shows doors are at seven and you're on a five past seven you know playing to no one um but there was a whole hour of the doors being open and by by the time we came on it was i would say it was pretty much full you know um and it went really well went really well we were we were absolutely humbled by the experience um yeah it, it was weird you know we, we were all quite um i guess we all live with that imposter syndrome a little bit where we're all like we're not good enough to do this what why are we here for you know um and, and we all have you know we're all very kind of um humble we, we we don't take compliments or whatever very well between us and it was just really weird afterwards because you know we, we played the set and then afterwards even we you know we walked out and you know there's like this massive cheer and everyone's like wanting to high five us and cuddle us and go like you've been the best band we've seen for like 15 years and it's like i don't know how to take this compliment i need to learn how to take a compliment because i'm just always self-deprecating you know people say nice things to me and i'm just like nah mate nah you know um but it was a, it was a really nice experience and and i for sure i would i would love to do more more of those things because i i love I love the DIY shows and I love the basement shows and I I love all of that aspect. Um, but I love those big shows. I love playing those big venues. Yeah. I love playing big festivals. Um, I think the, the feeling can't really be matched when you've got that many people in front of you. Can I uh, touch on, like, I, I think it's something that no one really talks about. We all look up to these shows growing up as, as these big deals, right? And yeah. it's it's very easy to think that a show like that is career changing, right? Um, yeah. What is the actual reality in this day and age of social media? What is the kind of return you get on a show like that? Do you see a massive increment in, in followers, in fans, in downloads, in that kind of thing? Or is it more of a slow burner? I mean, I think... <sighs> It, it it depends kind of what what kind of shows stuff we're talking about i mean that that personal one yeah i mean we definitely noticed a big increase in like spotify plays uh we noticed a big increase in facebook followers um yeah kind of likes and uh there was a lot more com you know there's a lot of comments and instagram you know there's was, there's was kind of quite a few few live videos and stuff like live streams put up of us us playing so yeah there was i mean in terms of like longer term impact you know those kind of big shows happen and you have a couple of days to kind of ride the wave a little bit and milk it a little bit and then you know then you're back down to earth and then you're like oh yeah it was it was just another show you know as cool as it was it was a cool experience but it was it was another show you know? i always feel that Ducking Punches and, and yourself have always been very good at, at maximizing the, the professionalism that a, a DIY band to start off with and then a band in general can, can bring to the table. And you see this in, in the way you interact with others in your social media and the shows you're playing, but it also in like the sponsorships that you have. You don't see many people working that hard to, to build a repertoire of sponsorships at, at that level that generally. Yeah, I guess not. And, and what's funny about it, I guess, again, this this might come back to that kind of imposter syndrome thing again. We we always, as a band, always think, like, we put very little effort into it. <laughs> um, but, but maybe we do put more effort into it than yeah. we give ourselves <laughs> kind of credit for you know we always go like god if we if we actually tried we would we would um be doing a lot more <laughs> but um yeah maybe, maybe that's maybe that's just our personalities again you know we, we probably should learn to kind of pat ourselves on the back now and again and Absolutely. go actually we've we've achieved we've achieved sort of some good stuff really but yeah i mean we're, we've been lucky that um you know again i think because we you know we're doing this as as a job so to speak you know we 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 have all kind of actively gone out and tried to kind of make connections with various kind of companies and i, I think it's vitally important to have you know i mean uh for me especially you know alongside duck and punches you know i'm, I'm obviously doing um some other bands and i've got my own little studio here and bits and bobs so you know it's it's been really important to me to to feel that I've I've got sort of some some companies and some sponsors 
who can who can kind of help me out and um you know it's a it's kind of like a mutual um uh, relationship really in that you know i i feel that i have the backing and i have the opportunity to play some you know really beautiful instruments and you know in in return you know i can i can promote them and work alongside them so yeah we you know that that is something that that we have kind of all all worked towards a little bit maybe maybe kind of unconsciously we've we've ended up getting to this point though yeah no that's good and i think something you've mentioned that's really important is that is that mutual understanding it's not just i want some free stuff it's what can we both bring to the table and that again oh, is the marketing side of things that's sometimes lost within the punk industry because of of the bands maybe we looked up to growing up sometimes yeah yeah you know and 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 i still i still firmly believe in the diy ethos you know i completely believe in that um you know you you need to make make this on your own you know but you will hit a certain point along the road where you just need a little bit of a hand along the road you know and there there should there shouldn't be any um kind of worry or stigma or you know you shouldn't put yourself down if you if you feel that you want to want a little hand you know of course and also like we go back to talking about mental health how long can you cope being in a situation where you're putting maybe your idea at the end of the day of diy ethics before your well-being your family's well-being your future that kind of thing yeah i've seen so many people burn out you know and and i've lost yeah. a lot of people as well and um it's it's quite sad to see you know um i think especially as as we all get a bit older you know i mean i'm i'm 37 now you know so i've been around um a fair bit in the scene you know and um i've seen i've seen some casualties for sure go and yeah. I, and I still see them out there, you know, and, and there's there's friends of mine sometimes that I'm I'm in fear of, you know, where where are they going to end up, you know, yeah. because um, there's only so much that your body and your mind can take, you know, and and you can abuse that for a little while. Fine. Have fun, whatever. But um, that that abuse will kind of catch up on you one day. And I feel kind of lucky myself that that i've kind of seen that and i've kind of s stopped that kind of self-destructive path that maybe once upon a time yeah. i was on um but i look out there and i still see great hordes of people still going down this road you know and and i can i find that that can be quite a weight on my mind you know um i can relate to that dude yeah yeah and I don't know. I, I would just kind of implore anyone really out there who um, who might be feeling that they they need a hand and they need to get off the path that they're going on. Um, just reach out to someone and don't feel don't put your pride before anything. That's very important. Um, and don't feel that you again need to um continue down that road because you know because it's punk rock or you know whatever you know because there's there's nothing punk rock about you know something killing you so yeah dude one of the reasons that i wanted to chat and and honestly i find it so encouraging to see the way the way you conduct yourself within the punk community the way you treat other people but also, I think something that's really important for, especially for younger people to realize, is that you can be 37, have a family, be playing in punk rock bands, yeah. and acting in a way that, that looks like you can carry on doing it for a long time. That's really encouraging for people to see. Yeah, you know what? And, the, and there's, there's even, you know, I was, I was actually randomly, I was chatting to um, Mo, who's the drummer for Lonely the Brave. I bumped into him the other day. Yeah. And we were we were kind of chatting about it a bit because he he was just saying how he'd just turned forty two, and we were saying you know it's it's funny this this kind of age thing that obviously we're we're all getting older at the same rate, you know. So whereas yes, you know I feel that I'm I'm kind of of that that generation now that's that's getting older. There's still for me I've still got those idols 
that are older than me who are still yeah. doing this. You know, um, Mike Park being one of them. Yeah, of you course. Know, um, I'm uh, wearing his T-shirt right oh, now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's just an absolute inspiration. That guy. You yeah. know, people like him, Ian McKay. You know, um, I mean. I was about to say Frankie Stubbs, and then I realized, <laughs> actually, he's maybe not the best role model to have. But, no. you know, there, there are still these guys who are who are out there. Duncan from Snuff is another one who I really look up to, who, you know, um, God, now loads are coming to my mind. Tom from um, Goober Patrol and Toy Dolls. Uh, you know, there's, there's still these people out there who are 10, 15, 20 years older. No means no. You know, they must be mid-60s by now. They're still punk as fuck. You know, they're yeah. still going out there. They're still kicking the ass of lots of younger younger bands and younger people, you know? So sometimes a part of me goes, ah, oh, getting towards 40, maybe I need to kind of slow down and stop, stop this kind of way of life and stop touring. Yeah. And then I look out and I see these these other other people who are, yeah, a generation older than me still doing it, doing it, and that's that's incredibly inspiring. You know, just shows that you you can do this. You know, there's nothing to stop any of us from achieving what we what we want to achieve in this life. But I'm I bet that doesn't mean it's easy to balance doing punk rock, having a family, and having a career. <sighs> No, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great nightmare to have, but it is it is a bit of a nightmare. I mean, um, I, I think the, the biggest thing for me, like the last couple of years, was um, literally getting Google Calendar. Like, with, without <laughs> Google Calendar, I don't know what I would do in my life right now. Um, I was always very much like a, an old school paper diary kind of guy. Um, yeah. and I, I do miss having a paper diary in some ways, but, um, definitely when you, when you've got a, like my wife is self-employed as well, as well. She runs a theater company and she's off touring quite a lot as well. Um, so when, you know, I'm self-employed, my wife is self-employed. I've got a, a four year old who, who's just started school. Um, you know, I've got to run the studio. I've got, I've got three or four bands to balance, um, you know, it's it's a lot to kind of, um, yeah, it is, it is definitely a juggling act, you know, but um, Google Calendar, you know, and having a shared Google Calendar with my wife yeah. is, that's that's actually made things a lot easier because we, you know, we, we used to have so many arguments where, you know, I'd, I'd book a tour in and then I'd come home and tell her and she'd be like, you can't do that because I'm away <laughs> here. And I'd be like, well, I didn't know. So, you know, what are we going to do? We've got a, we've got a child that needs childcare, you know. Um, but now, you know, now we have a shared calendar. It's it's literally, I just look on my phone and it, and we just have this unwritten rule of, you know, first come, first served. So if, if nothing is booked in, then I book it in, okay. you know, and then there's no arguments. That instantly pings up on, on Lucy's phone and... She knows what I'm doing, you know, um, and vice yeah. versa. She's like, shit! I was hoping to book something in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did, we did have, we yeah. Actually, tomorrow night we did have something where we we both put something in, and then this morning we were like, so what are we gonna do tomorrow night about Alfie? It's like, oh yeah, not I'm not sure actually. We 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 haven't quite worked that one out yet, but um, <laughs> I'm sure. Sure, something we'll figure out. We're we're kind of lucky in that we've we've both got kind of parents living nearby, so yeah. you know if if they need to come by and and look after him for for a few hours, then then they can do that. So there's there's one more topic that I'll touch on because of because of time. Yeah. I try and keep them. They're like kind of hour range. But beforehand, I just want to touch on, or at least mention for anyone who's listening, uh, mild peril the zine that. I know you you're not doing as much now, but it's absolutely wonderful, and I think it's still available online. If I'm correct, I've, I've got like a few handfuls of a few of the issues left. If the listeners get to it first, they'll be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think some of them literally, I might have one or two copies left. You know, I mean, they, these are, these are zines which are now, you know, getting on for ten years old. You know, prob- probably probably yeah. actually older. Thinking about it, you know. But you um, released. You released uh, an extra one last. Uh, was I it did last it year last, last September. I did one yeah, to coincide so. with. So it was our 
1000th Duck and Punches show. So yes. we um, we wanted to release, or I wanted to release a special edition for that because we, we did like a, an all day uh, in Norwich where we got kind of a, a bunch of our favorite bands and bands that we played with over the years we we got them to come and do like an ordea so i did do like a special edition mile peril um for that interviewed all the bands involved and sort of had a had a look back over kind of the duck and punches career and stuff so that was fun you know and i and i would i would love to pick it up again it's i guess unfortunately it's quite low down on my priority, yeah, priority. list right now yeah. um and i find kind of zines i still love zines i, I still buy zines I, I would love to write another zine again but um i find they are harder and harder to sell certainly when i did did the one um last year you know it was yeah i only did like i, I think i did like 300 copies and it was quite hard to sell those 300 copies to be fair yeah. um you know it's it's now you know again the age of google it's like if if someone wants to learn or read about a band they're just going to go on wikipedia you know um and it, and it's a it's a real shame it's i don't even think it's it's the access to the internet because there must be a reason we've got access to the internet and i still love zines True. too yeah i think it's the fact that the new generation hasn't grown up seeing scenes yeah. be a big part of the punk scene. They they have seen blogs as that. Yeah. So that's why I think it's important to mention Mild Peril, to mention the other scenes that some are still going and doing quite well. Oh man, I saw like uh, lights go out. I believe they just yeah. released their seventieth issue. I'm pretty yeah, sure nice. it's their seventy. I mean, seventy issues. That is. That's like outstanding. Hats up. I mean, I, I yeah. got to 20 issues, which I was pretty pleased <laughs> about. But to do 70 of these, do. I mean, that is, that's a lifelong commitment. Um, you know, and I, I tip my hat to Mr. T, you know, he's um, doing a great job. Yeah. Right. Uh, next project I was going to mention was I Said Goodbye. Yeah. Because uh, I love the tunes, so I need to give them a shout out. Any other bands that you're currently playing in? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've got Duck Punches, I Say Goodbye. We've just released our second album um, called History, yes. which is just out. Um, I also, randomly a bit different to this, uh, do a wedding band as well. So it's kind of a, a function band that, that we do um, with actually Alan from I Say Goodbye is in that as well. Um, oh, so, yeah, we, we got like a few weddings coming up and um, just trying to kind of get into the the function circuit a little bit more so that that's kind of fun actually because i've i've never i've never actually done a covers band before i've only ever done originals um so actually it's 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 quite a challenge to do this you know it, yeah. it's um certainly opened my eyes up and my ears up to to a lot of different things uh, different styles you know having to play kind of i don't know system of down toxicity one minute and then you're going into I don't know, Uptown Funk the next, and then you're playing Roxanne, and then a bit of the Darkness, Prince, whatever. You know, it, it's, um, it challenges you, you know, and you end up playing things that you wouldn't normally play because you're emulating another musician, you know. Um, so I've, I've really enjoyed doing that. Um, I'm also uh, doing a bit of recording with a band called Summer Now, which is... <laughs> Um, a friend of mine, Pete, who does, um, it's kind of explosions in the sky, kind of instrumental, Amazing. kind of post-rock. Um, so we, we've done our first album, that's up on Spotify, and I've just been sent the stems for um, album number two, so I need to start recording that soon. Um, and I think that's about it. Other than that, it's just kind of teaching, really. Teaching takes up a lot of my, my time as well. Yeah. So that's the last thing I was going to touch on. Although I was going to say, do you play uh, Place Your Hands by Reef in the wedding band? You know what? No, but that is... Oh, come a, on. <laughs> that's, a pretty good, that's a pretty good shout, actually. I'll tell you what I'll do <laughs> after this podcast. I'll, um, I'll send you the link to the... Uh, to our to our uh, playlist and see what you think and if there's any others if there's any other recommendations let me know but yeah re, re, <laughs> that's a good call actually that's a really good call <laughs> it's a great song so uh yeah teaching your little studio how was that getting that set up yeah it was great man i mean you know we we kind of looked at moving out the city 
um, two, three years ago, really, when when our son was getting a bit older, uh, we just wanted to um, escape to the country a little bit, you know. So we um, had a look around and found this really nice house um, just outside Norwich. We're about five, six miles outside of Norwich now. Um, just in a little village and yeah when we looked around there was basically a, a an old garage that had been converted into like a granny annex so sort of a lot of the hard work had been done you know electrics were in the floor was laid you know um, radiators were put in all of that so you know we sort of thought well this this could be a really good space for me to then utilize so I guess probably a couple of years ago really I, I just started to to do a bit of research and speak to a couple of builder friends I know who who have done this kind of thing before and yeah just sort of threw threw myself in the deep end really and went let's let's do this you know and it is it's been brilliant you know it's it's lovely to have um, my work and my space um, to work in literally like a stone's throw from my living room you know it means I can come out here like pretty much any time of the day jump on my drum kit i i have it mic'd up 24 hours a day so literally if if i'm sitting on a so on the on the sofa and i'd suddenly think of a drum beat in my head i can literally run over press record and record it down straight away so i'm trying to keep a bit of a a library and a catalog now on on my laptop of you know various fill-ins or grooves beats whatever just something that you know at some point in the future i'm i might be able to to utilize in some yeah. form or, or another so it's been really nice and being able to teach is really important as well you know not not just from um a financial reason but you know i, I feel it's it's vitally important to kind of again impart knowledge that i may have onto you know the next generation you know so to sure. to have kids come in and me be able to show them you know a beat and then put like i don't know put a paramore song on and get them to play to it you know their faces light up it's um incredibly rewarding thing to do you know um and i i i guess now this is my my 20th year of teaching i started teaching when i left school at 17 and i've taught for 20 years now and still to this day i, I get an absolute buzz out of doing it and it's something that i would always want to continue doing so yeah, so for, for for me, I think it's, I think being in a band can get to the point of burnout, and we've talked about it already. So in order to keep things fresh, in order to actually have something, if the band starts not doing well for a year, that can you can financially keep on going. How important is it to find a side hustle to do something like setting up that studio? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, definitely that that was kind of vital. I, I think, you know. Um, for example, at the moment, Duffing Punches, we're, you know, we're, we're taking a bit of time out just because we need to start writing um, for the next album, you know, and when you're touring all the time, it's very hard to sort of put that time aside to actually start writing yeah. uh, new material. So we, we've kind of gone, you know, right, let's let's take a few months out and actually, you know, spend some good time writing, you know. Um, so for me, you know, if we're not touring and I'm, and I'm not making money from that, then where is where's my income going to come from? You know, I've got to pay the bills. I've got to eat. I've got to feed my child, you know. So um, having having this for me personally, it's a teaching, you know, um, is is absolutely vital. You know, it's a lifeline. I couldn't I couldn't live without doing the teaching, you know. Um, for yeah. for Dan, for example, he's obviously he's he's quite a well-known illustrator, and he's also working on his um, tattoo apprenticeship at the moment as yes. well. Um, Nelson, as well, is also a tattooist. So you know, it's it's important that we all have our own little thing, you know, that defines us outside of the band, you know, because again, burnout does happen quite easily so to be, to be able to kind of walk away from the band for a few weeks and know that it's not going to fold but know that we can yeah. all concentrate on our own little projects for a little bit and then come back fully refreshed is is absolutely great i think there's so many people that stop playing in bands and bands that break up because they haven't figured that out in time because it's very easy to start playing in bands when you're in your late teens early 20s 
and and not get that sorted and then obviously you get more and more responsibility yeah and then your financial situation can change so much quicker than it did when you were younger and suddenly you need to get a full-time job or you need to focus on on sorting that situation out and I've seen so many people not carry on because they haven't figured out that balance you need financially to be able to push the band and I know I know you kind of hit the nail on the head It, it all has to start quite early on when you're quite young because um i mean for me like i I just sort of stated that that i started teaching at 17 um and i i'd moved out of home by you know and i had my own house by the time i was 19 you know and and really from from that age i I knew if i wanted this to be a long-term sustainable career that really when i was at that age that was the time to kind of like consolidate and um you know kind of try and save up money and try and be a bit kind of savvy with um with my finances and i'm kind of lucky now that you know yeah 20 years on that that that's kind of worked out okay for me because i think if i was trying to do that now i think i'd be too old (laughs) at least it gets more difficult doesn't it if not i I think everyone can do it but it does get more difficult you've got more burdens more responsibility yeah aches a bit more (laughs) and you get yeah you you know i get tired a lot (laughs) <laughs> a lot quicker now than I used to. I look, I look back yeah. to to things I used to do, you know, as a teenager or in my twenties, and and I couldn't do that now, you know. Yeah. If I if I don't get eight hours solid sleep, I'm a nightmare the next day. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely tell that to Jane. Like, she'll relate to that with me. Yeah, I, I do not. <laughs> like, yeah, if I don't sleep well, and then and then it's weird shit. Like, and I know this is going off topic now, but it's weird shit. Like it's not even getting eight hours sleep it's the fact that you wake up and you're like i got eight hours sleep but my back is still yeah. feels funny or something like Definitely. that Definitely, and and that that again you know sort of um time back into where we started is where kind of yoga and meditation can really help out because yeah. you know yo- yoga will, will obviously help with your your physical body and then meditation can really help with your mental body because there's there's been other times i've woken up and for i've had eight hours sleep but my brain feels tired, oh, dude. you know, yeah. um, and sometimes you need to give your brain as much rest as your as your body. And and like not going to bed with like a big project on your mind or yes. like a big issue that you've got to solve. Like sometimes it's better just to either if you're not able to meditate, solve the issue before you go to yes, bed or definitely. learn to meditate because otherwise your brain's still working for sure. Yeah. One one of the big things I found um, that, that helped me get to sleep better was um replaying like the whole day so rather than like mulling over you know sitting and laying in bed and mulling over everything that's kind of happened in a random order you know actually just visualizing yourself um waking up how you felt getting up having breakfast and actually like walking through your day and kind of dissecting your day and thinking about it and then literally taking it up to the moment of getting in bed lying down you know and then from that point you go right i've dissected my day this is now my rest time i'm done switch off and that that's really helped for me because i I would lay in bed for hours just yeah replaying and rethinking about things that had happened in my day you know and and you need to you need to switch off before you go to bed for sure if not you just wake up absolutely knackered yeah, and then you're no good to anybody else either. Exactly. Which is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I have enjoyed chatting so, so much. Thank you. No, oh, brother. Thank you so much for having me. I, I feel very honoured to be a part of this because, um, yeah, I say you, you, you've got some, some really interesting content online and some really great podcasts with some really great people. So it feels a privilege to be amongst them. <laughs> oh, thank you, dude. And I feel privileged for, for having you a part of them. It's awesome. Um, And we will chat soon, yeah? Yes, mate. You take care. Take care, dude. Thank you so much for checking out that episode of the podcast. I really had a great time chatting to Pete. And all the links to everything we mentioned to all his different projects can be found below. Please check his bands out because the music is absolutely wonderful. And if you are a new fan, I can assure you that it is worth your time. Please let me know if you've got any suggestions for things I should have asked, things I could be doing differently. That always helps. And if you're a first time listener and enjoyed that podcast episode, then please check out my one with Giles Bitter 
from Great Cynics and Dangers of Love. And my one with Sean McGowan, which is absolutely wonderful. And finally, I'll suggest the one with Luke Hodson from Awesome Merch, who helps a bunch of these DIY bands get their merch printed. And that episode was absolutely amazing too. So yeah, check those out and hopefully catch you next time. I still firmly believe in the DIY ethos. Completely believe in that. You need to make this on your own, but you will hit a certain point along the road where you just need a little bit of a hand.